Hello, this is Bob coming at you from the backyard and today we're going to go over deviation indexes. So there's a lot of exposure indicators. Every manufacturer has an indicator to tell you how much uh, exposure got onto your image receptor. And you should have watched the exposure indicator uh, video before this one. So if you haven't, pause this, turn it off and go get that. All right, so if you have, you're ready for this. So the deviation index um, is an index that could be used on every exposure indicator and it would let every vendor conform to the same kind of vocabulary. So we could take all these different exposure indicators, S numbers, log medians, blah blah blah, and we could represent them all the same way. All of them would have um, an EI, we, we, all of them would have a target exposure index. So that's the nominal, that's perfect picture, just enough signal to noise to give us diagnostic quality images, no model present, no excessive dose. And then we'd have a deviation index, meaning how far the indicator is from nominal. And so uh, the AAPM physicists all got together and came up with the standard, and slowly vendors are adapting it to it. You might have a new system that has your old indicator and your new indicator present. So here's the new indicator. They say that if you get a perfect exposure, that you achieved your nominal, so your S number is 200 or your log median is 2.5, whatever it is, it's perfect. It's the ideal exposure. That would get stamped with a deviation index of zero. If your exposure was overexposed, it would have a positive DI, and if it was underexposed, it would have a negative DI. And you'll see they, they'll quantitate how much. So say we had 10 mass as our perfect exposure. If you were, uh, if you take 25% of 10 mass, you get 2.5, you add it back to 10, and you'd see that if you shot it with 12.5 mass, it would have resulted in an index, deviation index of a positive one, meaning it's a little bit extra dose. If you shot a, an exposure at 15.6, you'd get a DI of positive two. And the way we get that is we take the DI of positive one, we add another 25% to that, so 25% of 12.5 is about three, and we add that back into the 12.5, and, and we see that if I shot 15.6, I would get a DI of two. And then for that next 25% jump, a DI of three, you would take 25% of 15.6, and you see if I shot it with 20 mass, like double the mass, 10 to 20, I would get a DI of three. So DI of three roughly means you did double the mass. And that's the, you know, you shouldn't be working out there. That's too much. So those were all 25% increments. The first one was off of nominal, and then they were each 25% off of the other indicator. DI two was 25% above DI one. When we go down in DIs, we're gonna go down by minus 20%, not 25. So again, the perfect exposure is 10. If you shot it at 8, you were 20% low of 10, you would get a DI of negative 1. If we take another 20% off of 8, we'd see 1, 6. So an exposure of 6, 4 would result in a DI of negative 2. And if I take another 20% off of that, I'd get 1.3. I'd get an exposure of 5 mass, when it should have been 10, would give me a DI of about negative 3. So I'd be doing half the mass I should. So we've again got a roughly half mass at negative three, roughly double mass at positive three. And you could round these numbers up to 12 and a half, 16 and 20, uh, but they're gonna move depending on where your starting point is, what your nominal is. So Quinn Carroll came up with these ranges. He said negative half to positive half, that's your target range. If you can work in there, then you're a pro. If you go above a DI of positive one, then if burn is evident, you probably wanna repeat it. Again, uh, the Dennis Bowman video showed us that burn is way out at 8, 10, 20, 40x, not at these little positive one, you know, at double exposures. So you're probably not going to repeat with a high DI, uh, but you did excessive dose. And then if you got under one for your negative one, under negative one, I should have fixed that, uh, and under, that's an underexposure, and you're probably going to see model, and you're going to need to repeat because you're not going to have a diagnostic quality image. All right, so we can do some math with this. So here's an example problem. You take an exposure of a knee at 70 kVp and four mass, and it gives you a, a DI value of point plus two. Uh, if you were to repeat it, what would you use? 
plus two tells me I'm over because it's greater than zero. And one, and if I have a calculator with a x to the n button, I could just take four mass and divide it by 1.25 squared, squared because that's my di value, two five because I'm high, I'm high by the, I'm on the positive two five side here, and squared because I've done it two steps of 25%. That would get me 2.56 mass. And if I go to my little converter, it says if I got a di of zero, 256 mass, what would it be at two? It would have been four mass. So I made myself a little spreadsheet converter to check my answers at the end. So four mass, uh, four, four mass gave us a positive two, 2.5 mass would give us a di of zero. That would be the perfect mass. All right, let's try another one. If you take an exposure at 70 kVp and 1.4 mass, and it's a di of negative three, what's going on? Well, it's less than zero, so it's underexposed. Negative three means I'm just about half what I should be. So I could throw out the fancy math and just double my mass. So 1.4 could be 2.8, that would get me a di of zero. If I wanted to do it with the fancy math way, again, I'm going down, I'm going off of nominal, so I'm 20% down, and I did it three times, di of negative three. So my di value goes right in that exponent, but because it's underexposed, I'm raising 0.8 to the exponent. If it was overexposed, as the previous problem showed, I would be raising 1.25 to the di value. So 1.4 over 0.8 cubed is 2.7 mass. I could go to my little checker. It says a minus 3 at 1.4 would be a 0 at 2.7. I did my math right. 1.4 at minus 3 is, would, have, would have been better off. I would have needed to double my mass to get to a di of 0. Let's try another one. If you take a knee at 70 at 1 and a 5 and you result in a di of 1.5. Oh my gosh, it's not 1, it's not 2. What do I do? Well, I know it's underexposed and I better use the fancy math. So fancy math says 1.5 over 0.8 because I'm less raised to the di value, 1.5. That gives me my new mass. Now, Dennis Bowman gave us this fantastic chart. And this can hang up in your room next to your machine where you have DI values. And it's an easier way for you to say what should you have used, what optimal mass should you use for your next value. So we'll use the chart for our next example. You shoot a chest at 100 kVp, 4 mass, you get a negative 2 DI. Well, it's underexposed. You go to your handsy, fancy, fancy chart, you circle negative 2, that's the DI value. We circle 4, the mass that you actually used and we'll find the intersection, and that 6.3 is the mass you should have used, and it would have given you a di value of zero. The junction of the two, the middle column is mass, the top row is di, the junction of the two is the mass that would have gotten you a di of zero. All right, so my answer is 100 at 6.3, should have resulted in di of zero. Here's another one, PHS 110 kVp at eight mass, if it gives us a di of 3, what's better? Well, di of 3, I can go the math solution. Well, it's up, it's positive, so it's greater than, it's overexposed. So I got to divide by a number greater than 1, so 1.25 raised to the third, the di value. That would spit out 4 mass. But who's got that calculator? Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the chart. I have a di of 3, I shot it with a mass of 8. Boom, the intersection is what I should have shot it at to get a DI of 0, 4. And finally, another way to have done this is, well, positive 3, that means I did double the mass. And I could quickly go to 4 mass, because I know a positive 3 is double the mass, and a negative 3 is half the mass. Okay, so that's how to use your DI values to move your mass around. Again, any time that you're doubling or halving your mass, you could be changing your KVP by plus or minus 15% and getting the same impact to your exposure indicator. One day, I'll only have to teach deviation index, and I think a lot of teachers have been saying that now for a lot of years. So this is X-Ray Bob. I'm out. See you in class.